Shane, when I was younger, the word grinding meant something a little bit different than it does today standing in front of this machine. I don't know if you can feel what I'm talking about or not, but grinding now is about machining and precision and technology. And we're here at JTEC today talking about grinding for a purpose. We're here to educate the audience on what you guys have to offer and the simplicity of using it as well as your support and everything that goes along with those who are in the grinding world, specifically today, OD grinding. I don't like to steal thunder, Shane. I know that you know this technology a lot better than I do. So would you mind giving us a quick overview of this technology and then we'll dive into some of the details. Sure, absolutely. Um, this style machine, the GE4, is more of a traditional style machine that JTEX manufactured for decades and decades. Uh, it's a T-shaped casting. Uh, it's a cast iron base, wheel head, foot stock, work head, all made out of the same casting material. We do that for thermal stability. Uh, cast iron is great for vibration dampening characteristics. So we stick with what's uh, worked for us in the past. Uh, we are starting to move into some newer technology with linear scales, stacked ax, uh, I'm sorry, linear guideways with stacked axis for a more compact footprint. Uh, it helps us reduce our uh, cost of manufacturing as well as our customers uh, overall uh, investment into the pieces of equipment. But uh, floor space is, is very important to a lot of our customers. So getting the footprint a little more compact is really why we want to focus on um, getting into that uh, particular area. But uh, as far as the construction of the machine, 100% built in Japan. We control everything from the manufacturing of the casting all the way through the assembly process. We offer full turnkeys. Uh, we're able to do turnkeys here in Arlington Heights or our Wixon facility. So from the ground up, we're controlling the whole entire process. Well, I know you guys set yourself apart in a lot of different ways. And sometimes that could be through precision, Some because obviously grinding, we need precision. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that could be through service and support, which at the end of the day, a sales guy can sell as many as we want, only if service support is good, right? right exactly. But a lot of times you guys come up because your precision and accuracy is top of the line. Your reliability is top of the line, but you have these ready to go. Mm -hmm. Your ability to say, look, you need something now, we can help you out. Is that where a lot of times you'll come into play and say, look, here we are, here's JTEC, here's grinding, here's the precision we can offer you, offer vibration dampening to go along with it. We build everything from the ground up, Japanese quality, which everyone knows, but we can have it for you today. Maybe today is a bit of an exaggeration, but you're sure. pretty quick on the market, aren't you? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, typically what we do is we try to keep a number of machines in inventory. We bring in a base model. So for example, this is our GE4 model. Uh, we also offer different versions of this, GL4s, a um, number of different specifications that we'll bring in, but what we try to do is work on a modular basis. So we'll stock the sub-assembly components, the work heads, the foot stocks, and different configurations for different applications. And we're able to take those inventory pieces that we have sitting on the shelf and retrofit them on the customer's floor or here in Arlington Heights or Wixom, Michigan, and uh, provide the solution for that application in a more timely manner. Uh, in a lot of cases, what we're looking for is getting our uh, vendors to supply the, for example, an in-process gauge in a timely fashion, and we're able to field retrofit those. So we're able to take a full solution and get it in a more timely manner because we are stocking the machines themselves and have inventory of the sub-assembly components in various configurations for any types of applications that we come across. I like it, Shane. I like it a lot. Now, as an industry, we are promoting automation on a regular basis. We're promoting the upgraded softwares that we can do more, the friendliness of these softwares as well. And I wanna go into your window-based software and how easy it is for someone to learn. But I also have to bring up these wheels right here because we do have a generation of people that like the feel of a manual machine sure. <laughs> or, or maybe we only have a couple of parts we need to run and not a big batch of jobs, right? So. Sure. The wheels, is that what they're here for? Yeah, let's start with wheels. Um, this is considered our pro specification. So what this allows us to do is utilize the machine as you would as like a manual style or a hydraulic style machine. It gives all of the features and benefits of a manual or hydraulic style machine um, with the benefit of having a CNC in the background. So for customers that are running an ultimate lot size or two, three different uh, parts, uh, two, three different pieces, it allows you to wrap it in pretty quickly, set your datum or your grind point, uh, hit your position memory button, tell it how much stock you want to take off with a grind pattern, and you're off and running. It's as simple as that. Um, going outside of that, through the CNC control, uh, you have full capability of uh, conversational, a uh, Windows-based platform. It's going to ask for three pieces of information. What is the amount of stock that we're removing? 
uh, what is our finish diameter, and how rigid is the part. With those three pieces of information, we're automatically generating a program. You can, of course, go back and set those feeds and speeds later, but it's enough to get you grinding conservatively. And then you can go and adjust your feeds and speeds, and uh, really, it's up to you at that point. So it's a very intuitive control. There's a number of different uh, features in the control itself that lend to keeping the machine maintenance, so reducing the downtime. We're monitoring everything in the machine from, for example, every time a solenoid fires. Uh, we'll know that that solenoid maybe has a useful life of a million cycles. So as we approach 990,000 cycles for that particular solenoid, an alarm's gonna pop up on the machine and say you're approaching the useful life of this manufactured solenoid. You may wanna get one on order. The operator has to sign off on it. It's a, a, a log that's kept so we know who saw that alarm that popped up, who signed off on it, and if for any reason that fails, somebody's gonna be accountable for it. I, I'm shaking my head only because where was this stuff when I was a machinist? You know how many machines I had to break or, or did break in time because they were older and I had no preventive maintenance issues, no sure. warning ahead of time. Mm -hmm. I mean, as I go around shops, one of the biggest headaches I get from a lot of machinists and not just the machinists, but the owners, the shop managers are, this machine is down and I can't get my job out. So I have to outsource it or and maybe I need to buy a backup machine in order to protect myself because these jobs are red hot. Something like this, in my opinion, is, is one of those things is not just uh, that I want to have, but almost a necessity mm -hmm. these days. Do you see it the same way as, as being the leader in this type of technology? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, time is money. Time so, is money. Yeah, if we're not making sparks, we're not making money. So I could use more of it, sure. actually. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Oh, we both. all could. We all could. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm getting older myself. Uh, but in it, yeah, absolutely. Uh, time is money. Uh, we got to be making sparks all the time. So by reducing the amount of uh, downtime that we can uh, have with a machine tool, uh, by taking care of those easy maintenance things, changing your filters, monitoring the useful life of a particular component within the machine, uh, that reduces those tendencies, and that's what we're focused on doing. We're, we're a production-oriented machine tool company, and that's what we build our machines for, from the construction all the way through to the control on just making sure that it's ease of use, reduce that downtime, the operator goes part to part, and so on. So that's yeah. the focus. Production-oriented with the ability to run a one or two off if necessary. Absolutely. With yeah. conversational programming that's even easier than us talking and what we're doing is pretty easy right. as well, right? Right, exactly. Pretty good conversation, right guys? You're like, yeah, Shane's pretty amazing. So in the world of grinding, this is JTEC. This is the Japanese technology. This is the ease of use. Is there anything I haven't asked you today or any closing statements you'd like to offer the audience about either the technology or JTEC as a whole saying we're here to help you or anything like that? that I haven't asked yet. Sure, absolutely. You know, we sell on a basis of um, cost of ownership. You know, our overall cost of ownership, we take a lot of pride that our machine tools are gonna last a long time. And there's a number of Toyota grinders, JTEC grinders that are still out there running production from the early 1990s, late 1980s. And that's a testament to the construction. With the cast iron base, we run a hydrostatic way system. That's a flattened V on the traditional style. That's all hand scraped. We're one of the few manufacturers that still does the art form of scraping. Nice. So we're uh, tolerances when we're approaching parts. The customer says, hey, we've got to hold a tenth. We've got to hold 80 millionths. We're not shying away from that. We know that the machine's capable of it. Uh, as far as our wheelhead spindle, the heart of the machine, we run a combination hydrostatic, hydrodynamic wheelhead bearing. There's no metal to metal contact uh, when the machine is powered on. So once those pumps uh, lift the spindle off of the bearing babbits, uh, we're free floating even at dead rest. So this is unique to uh, JTEC that we're actually free floating. The only thing that's uh, preventing that wheel from continuing spinning, from continuing to spin, is the belt tension back to the motor. So that's an item that you don't ever have to worry about replacing. It's just a filter. Wow. You, know, you do that once a year, no problems. Um, in addition, we do the little things. We, we put the uh, steel plates on top of the casting with an air gap to prevent any type of thermal distortion. We want to make sure that the coolant stays on the part itself, which is where it belongs, not on the casting, causing any fluctuations, which could cause anything in size variation. Uh, and the thermal stability of a cast iron is fantastic. So with temperatures for shops, we sell all the way down in South America. We sell in colder climates. When you come in and start the machine up, we want to run maybe a cycle or two to get the machine warmed up. We want to still want to have to spend a half an hour warming the machine up. 
So these are all the things that we take into account to make sure that our customers are getting a great experience, cost of ownership with reduced downtime, and a machine that's gonna have the longevity for basically, you know, a shop owner that's gonna be spending the money for something like that, so. It sounds like you guys have thought of everything, and if you haven't, you're thinking of it, and if you're not thinking of it, you will be thinking. I mean, it oh, really, yeah. the way you just summarized all of that for the audience and for myself, thank you for doing that. It, it has all the bells and whistles, things we might not have seen before. Really great technology, so I appreciate your time, Shane. Thank yes. you for that. Thank you, really appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. For everyone watching, this is great technology. This is JTEC. This is how you can excel in the world of grinding. And conversationally, we did pretty good as well. Shane, thank you so much, Pleasure. my friend. You. Yes, you are amazing. Thank you.